everybody. Josh and Brent here, coming to you from Chattanooga, Tennessee, from Spraylock Studio 11. 11? Yeah. I thought we were at 18. Well, it's 11 today. Oh, it's 11. You can tell by the black background. We're coming to you today to talk about control of, of drying shrinkage cracking. How can you better mitigate drying shrinkage cracking or reduce the chances of those, those awful things happening to your project? Uh, our base document we're, we're really drawing from today is ACI 224R, which is Control of Cracking in Concrete Structures. And uh, Josh, I mean, if you don't mind kicking us off, what's, what's one of the first things you want to consider when you're talking about trying to control drying shrinkage cracking? Well, I think the first thing we're going to do is start with restraint. I mean, we're going to get into concrete mix and, and talk about curing and jointing. But the big thing at the beginning of it is, is your design. How much restraint are you designing for? And I know that becomes a, a, a thing where structural engineers about looking at what do you mean designing for restraint? It's not so much designing for restraint, but it's looking at the restraint possibilities you have. If you're pouring up right to a, a, a masonry wall or to a concrete wall, existing concrete, uh, those are things that can cause restraint. So isolation material there mm -hmm. to allow it not to get locked in and, and to break that restraint portions. You also have things such as I've seen, uh, and I know you have too, you walk up, you got the masonry walls, you're pouring the, the slab after the fact, and you're pouring through a doorway. Mm -hmm. that, that smaller section is going to create you some restraint as well. And then we got to look at your base prep. Okay. And when you look at your base prep, I'm not talking about your, the underlayment of, of your subgrade or your, even your, your rock, but I'm talking about the fact of your utilities that's coming up through the underground. Um, if you have a forest of pipes coming up, you're going to get a lot of restraint. It doesn't allow that concrete to move as much as when it's locked in by those pipes. So as much as you can, push all those pipes into, into one area to eliminate as, as much of that that restraint going yeah, to old place. That makes a lot of sense because if, if concrete goes to shrink, it's losing water, it goes to shrink. Um, if it's locked down or locked in place by those restraint points that you're talking about, that's where the cracks are going to occur, aren't they? Right. It, and we, we know we're not going to get rid of all the restraints. So again, in 224, we talk about joint, it talks about jointing and it talks about to put your joints in such a way that you're getting that restraint pulled out so that you're controlling that cracking. So it's, it's still there. It's just not as unsightly as uncontrolled cracking. Sure, so wh what else can we do to, to try to get a hold of our drying shrinkage issues on a job site? Well, we talk about the concrete mix, but honestly, you've got almost 30 years playing with concrete mixes. You've got way more than experience than I do. Well, you know, I know we got little things we can talk about, water cement ratio, powder content, and, and the ags, but if you don't mind, tell us your background, because I know you've done several jobs where you've re lowered that restraint. Yes. Yeah, sure. not restraint, but... Yeah, low, low drying shrinkage kind of mixes, uh, low shrink kind of mixes are, are fun because uh, it's a bit of a challenge. It all starts with the idea that mortar shrinks. Coarse aggregate doesn't, typically. So we want to maximize our coarse aggregate content in the mix. We want to get just as much rock as you can get into that concrete mix. And the way that you can go about that is by approaching a total gradation design using something like Shillstone or uh, Tyler Lay's tarantula curve, uh, where you get as much coarse aggregate as you can get in there and still allow that concrete to be placed and finished you know, properly. Um, you want to be sure it's really well graded so that you can have the lowest amount of pace possible. And what I mean by that is if your puzzle pieces of your aggregates fit together nicely and, and fill the voids that they need to fill, then you won't have as much pace needed in between those little aggregate particles to get the, uh, the concrete mix to move in the way we want it to. So good particle packing. That's a great word. I love, whenever you're talking about drying shrinkage, you're going to hear the words particle packing, and that's exactly right. You want to get good particle packing to uh, minimize the drying shrinkage of your mix. You can also use things like shrinkage reducing admixtures. Um, you can, as a, as a designer, if there's, if there's architects or engineers watching, you can specify a maximum 28-day shrinkage value, for instance, using uh, ASTM C157 or ASTM C1581 testing uh, methods. Um, those are all very useful tools in approaching the shrinkage issue from a mixed design standpoint. And that's concrete drying shrinkage, not laundry. So, so what about curing and joining, Josh? Well, when you talk about curing, I mean, ACI 308 is your go-to manual for it. And we talk about, it talks about initial curing and final curing, and it actually talks about the steps for those and length of time, because that's really going to matter. And then proper joining. 
is not just the spacing of your joints depending on your depth of your concrete, but it's also getting into when you're doing that as sure. well. Uh, you can't wait three days to go put your joints in because by then your drying shrinkage is done and you're gonna have some uncontrolled cracking. Sure, and I think we've covered curing and joining in a couple of other videos yeah. because they are so important. Uh, what about spray lock concrete protection products? What can, what can our products do for drying shrinkage? Well, we've done several lab testing. What we found is that in, compared to the control, we've gotten 40 to 60% as a, as a good typical reduction. So we're, we're doing phenomenal with it, but that also depends on when you're applying our stuff. Mm -hmm. Our stuff needs to be applied for that best benefit. As soon as you walk on the concrete without marring or, 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 or destroying any of it. So we're getting in right after the finisher mm -hmm. and generally right before the, the jointing uh, the, are being cut. Sure. So we work really well within that time frame. We're not delaying it. But if you wait two days or, or, or whatever, then you're going to get a lot less on that because, as we all know, our drying shrinkage is happening really early on. You know, it's not happening at 28, 90 days. We're talking about in the first day to, to three days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, most of the drying shrinkage happens really early, so you got to take precautions early. So thank you so much for joining us today in our discussion of drying shrinkage. We hope that these things have helped you have better concrete in the future. Um, and, and if there are any questions, please put them in the comments down below. Like and follow us. And uh, from Josh and Brent in Chattanooga, Tennessee, we'll catch you next time.